Hi everyone, uh, I'm Slata Subedi. Uh, unluckily, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't be there in person to present, but I'm here to present my presentation uh, virtually. So uh, we, and the, our three universities, Louisiana State University, Texas A&M, and Arkansas State University have collaborated together on this project, which is titled as a Evaluation of Alternative Sources of Supplementary Cementitious Materials uh, for Concrete uh, Application. So uh, in this presentation today, I'll start with the presentation, mention the objectives of this research, uh, talk about the methodologies, discuss the results, and then we'll finally come to my presentation. So uh, from this session and from earlier session, uh, we have known that the use of the supplementary cementitious material is a common practice in concrete, uh, not only to lower the carbon footprint, but also to improve the durability and its mechanical properties. Uh, among the different uh, supplementary cementitious materials, fly ash from coal burning power production is the most widely used SPM in the U.S. When used in uh, when used to partially replace the cement, uh, it only not reduces the carbon footprint, but also enhances the concrete long-term mechanical properties and uh, durability. In terms of press properties, it also improves the workability, reduces bleeding, and enhances pumpability. Uh, specifically, when highly pozzolanic plaster fly ash is used, it also mitigates the alkali silica reactivity. So, uh, due to these benefits, the uh, use of the fly ash in concrete has become a common practice. Uh, in 2019, more than this 80 percent of the consumed fly ash was just used by the cement and concrete industry. And in the upcoming years, the demand for this fly ash is expected to increase. However, at the same time, the coal fire power, fire power generation is declining and due to the stricter uh, environmental regulation, finding the higher quality and economical fire ash has become challenging. In fact, uh, in a recent AFSCO survey, which also included about uh, 46 state DOTs, 80% uh, of those uh, respondents says that they have been issues with the uh, getting the quality and uh, quality of the fire ash supply. So this start uh, in here shows the uh, the uh, total production of the fly ash and in term, and also the the total consumption. So um, all the produced fly ash are not used. Uh, the large amount of those coal for those assays are also disposed in landfills and surface impoundments due to the market disparities, logistical challenges, and failure to meet the specifications. So it is estimated there are nearly 1 billion uh, tons of fly ash in landfills and impoundments, and this uh, and this could be a potential supply for the SPMs in the upcoming year decades for the U.S. However, uh, the fly ash that are uh, disposed in the surface impoundments requires significant processing, but the ones that are disposed in the landfills can be used uh, by drying and minimal processing to meet the specification. These ash are, ashes are called as they reclaim fly ash in short form uh, RFA. Along with the uh, fly ash, bottom ash is also produced in the uh, coal fired power generation uh, power plants. However, uh, the bottom ash are relatively coarser, has higher well, has higher porosity than the regular class uh, than the regular fly ash. Therefore, uh, whenever the bottom ash is uh, used in concrete, it's expected that it will worsen the workability and reduce the carbon pressive strength. But also, the, the bottom ash has high content of the silica and some aluminia. Therefore, when uh, properly processed by grinding, uh, this material will also be a potential uh, material uh, for, the, for the application as SPM. So uh, the fly ash have, uh, ability has been an uh, uh, issue in the concrete industry. Therefore, the objective of this study was to evaluate the unconventional coal ash products that are reclaimed fly ash and ground bottom ash as an alternative sources of SEM to produce durable and high quality concrete. In this regard, this study evaluated three different uh, coal ashes. Those were reclaimed fly ash, reclaimed ground bottom ash, and uh, both of them were com compared against the conventional class ash fly ash, which was also a control material. Uh, 
So all these materials were used as received from the supplier. Some of the processing were done by the suppliers uh, itself, but uh, when it when we received the material, we just uh, characterized the material and used in the uh, used in the concrete. So in the, in the first phase, all three materials were characterized. The reclaimed fly ash was uh, received from Georgia. The ground bottom ash was received from Texas, and class ash fly was received from the Illinois. So all three fly assays were evaluated in terms of the scanning electron microscopy to get the insight into the morphology of the materials, extra fluorescent to gain the uh, to, uh, chemical composition of the materials, extra diff diffraction was conducted to determine the mineralogical composition, and laser scattering particle analysis was conducted to determine the particle size distribution of all three cold assays. In addition, physical properties such as a loss in ignition, moisture content, water requirement, and seven and 28 days strength activity index were also determined as for a ASTM C311. Uh, also to gain further insight into the sustainability, uh, sorry, uh, uh, photolytic activity of, uh, of three coal assays, this thermogravimetric analysis, TGA, was conducted. For this, uh, for the TGA analysis, calcium hydroxide and the coal acids were uh, mixed at a mass ratio of 3 is to 1 in a 0.5 molarity potassium hydroxide solution while maintaining a liquid solid ratio of 0.9. The sample was then kept at 50 degrees Celsius at 10, for 10 days and at the, after 10 days, the TGA was conducted on, this, on the samples. So, uh, these steps were done for the SCM characterization. In the next phase, uh, these materials were used in the concrete. For, so for the production of the concrete materials, type one ordinary Portland cement was used, limestone with a specific gravity of 2.68 and maximum uh, nominal aggregate size of 19 mm was used as a coarse aggregate, silica sand uh, uh, with a specific gravity of 2.65 and uh, maximum uh, nominal aggregate size of 0.75 mm was used as a fine aggregate. All three coal acids were used as a um, supplementary, uh, were used as an SPM in concrete mixers. In addition, um, to enhance the workability, polycarboxylate based water hydrogen water reducer was used and also an air entrainment and mixer was used for all concrete mixers. So on the experimental matrix for the uh, concrete mixers uh, with, uh, were produced by replacing 10, 10 20, and 30% of cement by mass by each of the uh, coal ashes. So in a total of eight, 10 concrete mixers were produced where nine were mixers incorporated the coal ashes and one control mixer was produced without any coal ashes. So um, the concrete mixer in this study was designed as per uh, Louisiana DOTD specifications for type A, type A1 structure concrete with a water to cement ratio of 0.45 with a target compressive strength of 4,500 PSI and a target uh, air content of uh, 6%. The binder content for all the, uh, all the concrete mixers were 344.1 kg per meter cube. So uh, this slide presents the detailed mix design of all the 10 concrete mixes that were produced in this study. So uh, all the produced uh, concrete mixers were evaluated uh, for fresh properties uh, in terms of the slump air content. And in terms of hard, hardened properties, the compressive strength at, day, at 48 and 90 days were evaluated. The surface resistivity as per ASTO 358 was also evaluated at 48 and 90 days. Furthermore, the drying shrinkage and alkali silica reactivity of all the uh, mixtures were evaluated. So now moving on into the result section. Um, so this slide presents the uh, SPM image of flat ash at low and medium uh, magnification. So we can see that the flat ash is uh, composed of a um, mostly spherical particles with few impurities. This is the uh, SPM image for the uh, reclaimed fly ash, which also shows the similar morphology as reclaimed, uh, sorry, similar morphology as fly ash. However, the impurities in RFA seems to be coarser than the fly ash. In contrast, the ground bottom ash presented the entirely different morphology, and that is, it contains the irregular and angular shaped particles. So, um, from the particle size distribution, uh, we came to know that the reclaimed fly ash has the uh, coarser, 
particles than uh, than the uh, ground bottom ash and the fly ash. For instance, the mean particle size for reclaimed fly ash is 64.5 micrometer, whereas for the fly ash and the ground bottom ash are 19.2 and 23.2 respectively. So uh, the particle size distribution of the fly ash uh, and the ground bottom ash were similar. So um, the table in this slide presents the chemical composition of all three coal acids. So, uh, so for all three materials, the sum of the silica, aluminum, and iron oxide were higher than the minimum requirement of 70% for, uh, class, uh, for uh, class F fly ash as for ASTM 618. In addition, this material also exhibited very low sulfur trioxide, which is also one of the requirements in ASTM 618. Uh, the calcium, high, the calcium oxide was the highest um, for ground bottom as in comparison to the other two mixes. So um, the bar graph here shows the results of the uh, TGA analysis. Um, so among the three coal ashes, reclaimed fly ash exhibited the highest calcium hydroxide consumption of um, consumption, which was then followed by ground bottom ash and then uh, and then fly ash. So uh, the, the TGA analysis was conducted as for a previous study from uh, Suranini et al. And in this study, if a material has a pozzolanic uh, con CS consumption of higher than 50 gram per 100 gram of uh, SEM, the material could be classified as a pozzolanic. Hence, since all these three materials meet that criteria, all these materials can be classified as pozzolanic as for that study. So uh, this graph presents the uh, XRD spectra for all three coal assays. So um, in all three coal assays, a distinct quartz is, uh, can be evident, which shows the uh, presence of the crystalline silica. In addition for uh, FA and RFA, a significant amorphous hump uh, can be observed uh, from 50 to 30 uh, to theta, whereas that amorphous um, is not so significant for, for the ground bottom ash. So uh, in this slide, uh, the physical properties of the, the of all three collapses uh, are presented. Uh, in terms of the loss and ignition, uh, surprisingly, uh, reclaimed fly ash has higher uh, loss and ignition, and then uh, the ground bottom ash has the least uh, loss and ignition. And the and also uh, the seven in terms of the strength activity index uh, among the three coal assays, uh, ground bottom ash exhibited the highest strength activity index at seven eight, seven days of curing, whereas the reclaimed fly ash exhibited the highest uh, at twenty eight days of curing. Uh, nevertheless, uh, all three coal assays uh, made the requirement for SAI as for ASTM C six eighteen. Um, but it is interesting to note that the both um, both these coal assays exhibited a slightly um, slow, lower um, lower SAI at 28 days of curing uh, than the RFA. So um, this slide presents the summary of all the properties uh, uh, that, that that were used to characterize the materials. And overall, uh, based upon the characterization, these three coal acids met the requirements for the uh, uh, sum of silica, aluminum, and iron oxide, sulfur trioxide, uh, moisture content, and uh, loss and ignition. These also made the physical uh, requirements for strength activity index and water requirement. So uh, now moving into the uh, properties of the concrete. So uh, in terms of the fresh properties, the use of the uh, reclaimed fly ash and the ground bottom ash produce a decrease in the workability of the mixtures, whereas the uh, fly ash produce a better or the similar results as the control mixer. Um, so among the three coal ashes, uh, ground bottom ash is the one that produces a significant uh, decrease in the workability of the mixtures, which is attributed to their uh, angular and the irregular particles as observed in the SDM image. In terms of the uh, air content, uh, all three uh, uh, all three coal ashes produce a decrease in the air content. However, uh, reclaimed fly ash presented a relatively lower, uh, exhibited a significantly um, higher air content in comparison to the other two materials. Uh, 
Now moving on to the hardened properties, um, at 28 days of the curing, uh, the regular class F fly ash um, sold and decreased in the compressive strength at all replacement levels. Um, so reclaimed fly ash also presented a decrease at all replacement levels. Um, but ground bottom ash sold an increase in compressive strength at, 20, at 10 and 20 percentage, but sold the higher, um, but sold the lower compressive strength at 30 days of uh, at 30 uh, 30 percentage of replacement. But the improvement at 10 and 20 percentage um, is not statistically significant. But uh, at 90 days of the curing, um, the fly ash uh, showed a uh, decrease in compressive strength at all replacement levels. But for RFA, it showed higher compressive strength than the control mixer at 20% replacement level. And for uh, ground bottom ash, it shows the higher compressive strength at 10 and 20% replacement level. Uh, in addition, um, the compressive strength at 20% replacement level for a ground bottom ash was stat Particularly significant in term, in comparison to the control mixers. So it is uh, also the another point is that uh, at 90 days of curing, both reclaimed fly ash and ground bottom ash are presenting better results than the uh, fly ash at same replacement level, um, indicating that these materials has the possibility to be used as a SCM uh, in terms of comp compressive strength only. So now moving into the surface resistivity. Uh, so uh, at 28 days of uh, curing, uh, some uh, improvement in surface resistivity can be observed, especially for here also ground bottom ash is the one that is um, presenting the highest value among all other uh, coal ashes. The similar result is also observed at 90 days where the ground bottom ash is the one that is representing the highest surface resistivity among uh, all the coal ashes. Um, so um, the, another thing here is also that the uh, both the uh, reclaimed fly ash and ground bottom ash are presenting better results in, in comparison to the class F fly ash. So um, in drying string case, uh, from this we can see that the uh, impl while implementing both assays, a significant uh, uh, reduction in the drying string case is observed. However, for fly ash, um, fly ash, the increase in the cement replacement level did not produce a significant reduction in the drying shrinkage. That is, at 28 days of the curing, uh, almost all uh, almost all of them presented a similar uh, drying shrinkage. In terms of the uh, reclaimed fly ash, um, while increasing the cement replacement level from 10 to 20 percent, a decrease in the drying shrinkage was observed. However, when the cement replacement level was increased from 20 to 30 percent, um, the same uh, decrease uh, in drying increase were not observed. Uh, and finally, in terms of the ground bottom ash, the percentage of the replacement level did not have any effect on the uh, drying shrinkage. Well, that is, at 28 days, uh, the lowest drying shrinkage is represented by the, by the mixtures utilizing only 10 percentage uh, of ground bottom ash. So um, the last properties of concrete that we evaluated were was alkali silica reaction. Uh, Use of the all the all acid all coal acids showed a decrease in the expansion related to the alkali silica reaction, uh, and also the decrease in alkali silica reactivity were proportional to the increase in the cement replacement level. I.e., the expansion decreased as we increase the cement replacement level, and also uh, all the materials, including the control mixture, exhibited the uh, lower expansion uh, than 0.1 percentage, which is the maximum limit exists. As for ASTM uh, 1567 at 16 days of curing. So, uh, this is the summary of the effects of the concrete properties. Um, so, in terms of this slump, only the fly ash uh, mixture uh, exhibited the similar or better results in comparison to control. And in terms of the air content, only uh, fly ash at 20% shows higher air content than the uh, control mixer. So the hardened property showed here is the based upon the statistical analysis. The red cross shows that the, the decrease in the um, in the compressive strength or the surface resistivity was a 
statistically significant and the uh, green tick mark shows that the increase in the uh, surface resistivity or compressive strength was statistically significant well whereas the uh, um, the uh, double dash shows that the impact of these uh, coal assays were in insignificant therefore uh, at the, therefore only ground bottom ash at the 20 percent days produced a significant results at 90 days of curing in terms of compressive strength whereas the all coal ashes at all replacement soil a significant improvement in terms of surface resistivity at 90 days of curing so in conclusion, um, all SCMs evaluated uh, in this study are promising for the reuse in concrete materials, uh, but uh, depending on the SCM used and the cement replacement label, adjustment in the concrete mixer design and or admixture doses may be necessary to meet the specified hardened or fresh properties. So uh, based upon the uh, mechanic, based upon the results, uh, up to 20% is of cement replacement with RFA and uh, reclaimed flour ash and ground bottom ash can be used without compromising concrete's long-term mechanical and durability properties. And finally, while the reclaimed flour ash and ground bottom ash, the, the one that were evaluated in this study, presented a satisfactory performance. Uh, it is important to note that the properties of this material varies from uh, sources to sources, plan to plan. A verification should be conducted on a supplier and source basis prior to the implementation in concrete mixers. So uh, I'd like to thank the Transit for, and um, LTRC for their support in this research. And with this, I'd like to conclude my presentation and I'll be glad to answer any questions you have.